Cheers. So moving along, I just want to talk about Bleak House in a single video. This is often considered Dickens' best novel. It is extremely well plotted. Um, it actually has one of my favorite Dickens chapters ever, and I will get back to that. I just want to point out an excellent adaptation of the book. Has uh, This is from 2005. You can see it here, and I'll link it. Uh, this is on Amazon. Evidently, they don't really have it on Amazon Prime right now. It's BritBox. Nah, whatever. I got to see it on the Amazon Prime before they shoved in the Brit box, I suppose. Um, and you can probably find it via other routes, uh, but I'm not going to, whoops, I'm not going to bother. So this has eight episodes in this mini series. It's very well acted. There's certain aspects of it that's well done. The issue with Bleak House, uh, Dickens was doing a bit of an experiment with this book. So some of the chapters are in the third person omniscient narrator, like you normally have in a Dick Dickens novel. But also there's a first person narrator, Esther Summerson. So first off, it's a young lady. And second off, uh, Esther is a little bit too good. And it kind of is annoying after a while. It, it gets a little, it is not totally unreasonable in Dickens, but some of the stuff is just too much. With the mini series, yes, you're going to get some of the stuff from Esther's point of view, but still you're looking at the actress playing Esther, so you have some distance, and it makes it easier to deal with her. So the problem is that the picture of the, of the actress you see here, you're showing her with smallpox, not 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 too bad a case of smallpox, um, but still with smallpox. Uh, and Esther is supposed to be somewhat plain, blah blah blah, versus Ada Clare. That's that girl right there. Um, it has the uh, Jarndyce versus Jarndyce uh, probate case, where it's a dispute over wills. And it's based on something that Dickens actually learned about in court cases. So he knew a lot of lawyers from his parliamentary days. He just, I mean, he was a London man through and through and talked with all sorts of people in politics, in law, in medicine. He actually was befriended at least one actuary and was in a, a short story. I'll do that another time, the short story that has an actuary as the hero. It's kind of interesting. Uh, in any case, this is an excellent adaptation. The book is obviously very good, but I have found, you know, a lot of people will find the adaptation so much better. So let me talk about the best chapter of Dickens ever. Mercy. Bleak House. Death by spontaneous combustion. There have been some Things that people say that have actually died like that. Yes. So Dickens, when he published it as a book, so, you know, he published it like a chapter or two at a time yeah. in magazines. But then after that was done, he would publish it as a single book. And he might have a foreword or an afterword or something like that. So... When he published Bleak House as a novel, he did a foreword because so many people objected to having the character die by spontaneous combustion. And it is the creepiest. Actually, I need to find that. Um, I need to find that uh, death because it is the creepiest. Chapter ever, especially since. You realize by the end of the chapter what has happened, and you go back and read. So there's two characters waiting for Mr. Crook. Okay. And they're not going to see him till midnight. Um, or they're not supposed to disturb him till midnight. He's probably going to fall asleep, blah, blah, blah. He's usually, he's an old fat man. He's always sitting on his chair near the fireplace, smoking, and he's completely drunk which is most of these spontaneous combustions. I mean, what happens is, and they think, there's a lot of different theories, but 
but it's almost always elderly people who have neuropathy, so they can't feel, who are completely drunk, the and are fat. was an old woman. I forget her name or where she was. No, but he, so in this foreword, he provides the examples that he had read about to make it more convincing, right? Yeah. So let me see if I have the, okay, here we go. So it's Mr. Snagsby and Mr. Weevil are the two guys who are waiting. You ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and once you realize, like, you go back and read it, and like, ooh, this is really creepy. Because when you read it through the first time, you don't realize what's about to happen. So, very true. Don't you observe, says Mr. Sags Snagsby, pausing to sniff and taste the air a little. Don't you observe, Mr. Weasel, that you're, not to put too fine a point on it, that you're rather greasy here, sir? Why, I've noticed that there is a queer kind of flavor in the place tonight, Mr. Weevil rejoins. I suppose it's the chops at the Saul's Arms, so that's like the local pub. Mm. Chops, do you think? Oh, chops, eh? Mr. Snagsby sniffs and tastes again. Well, sir, I suppose it is. But I should say their cook at the Saul wanted a little looking after. She's been burning them, sir. And I don't think Mr. Snagsby sniffs and tastes again. And spits and wipes his mouth, getting into their mouths. Mm. I don't think, not to put too fine a point on it, that they were quite fresh when they were shown the gridiron. That's very likely. It's a very tainting sort of weather. It is a tainting sort of weather, says Mr. Snagsby. And I find it sinking to the spirits. By George, I find it gives me the horrors, returns Mr. Weevil. Oh, Mr. Guppy comes. I'm sorry. Mr. Snagsby comes and he visits and then he leaves. Then we got Tony. Nothing has been the matter, but here I've been stewing and fuming in this jolly old crib till I've had the horrors falling on me as thick as hail. There's a blessed-looking candle, says Tony, pointing to the heavily burning taper on his table with a great cabbage head and a long winding sheet, you know, winding sheet for a candle, okay? It is smoking. It is smoky. There is fat in the air, and it's oily and yellow. It's been smoldering ever since it was lighted. Okay, Mr. Guppy has been biting his thumbnail. As he's doing so again, he happens to look at his coat sleeve. He takes his attention. He stares at it aghast. Tony, what on earth is going on in this house tonight? Is there a chimney on fire? Chimney on fire? I see the soot's falling here on my arm. So for an entire hour, it's Mr. Crook. Pieces of Mr. Crook all over them that they've been wiping. It is creepy. <laughs> Let's see. Look at my fingers. A thick yellow liquor defiles them, which is offensive to the touch and sight and more offensive to the smell. A stagnant, sickening oil with some natural repulsion in it that makes them both shudder. What have you been doing here? What have you been pouring out of window? I'm pouring out of window. Nothing, I swear. Never since I've been here. It's like, oh, this is a horrible house. Give me some water. I shall cut my hand off. So they still haven't gone downstairs yet. So they're up like on the second floor. <laughs> and so th this is the this end. This is glory. The end, no, he is. Dickens is actually really good on like horror and creepiness and he just. Ugh. So this is the very end of the chapter. Here's a small burnt patch of flooring. So they've come down. To go talk to him, they see a small burnt patch of flooring. Here is the tinder from a little bundle of burnt paper. Because he's supposed to hand, Mr. Crook is supposed to give them a bundle of paper. But not so light as usual, seeming to be steeped in something. And here it is. Is it the cinder of a small charred and broken log of wood sprinkled with white ashes? Or is it coal? Oh, horror! He is here! <laughs> <laughs> and this from which we run away striking out the light and overturning one another into the street is all that represents him so what they think is a light leg yeah help 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 come into this house for heaven's sake yeah anyway and then and at the very end it's like spontaneous combustion, combustion. and none other i mean can be died and yeah and none other of all the deaths that can be died so it was a big, I mean, it was a big to do that people were like, no, 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 it's just, it's too fantastical. It doesn't happen. And then Dickens had to write back and he's like, no, it does happen. It has happened. 
and hear all these stories. But when you look at all of the stories, so here we go. Countess Cornelia de Baudi, uh, Cezanate, whatever, however she said. I think it's less spontaneous combustion unless they accidentally set themselves on fire. So the, the issue is, how could they be so completely burned? Because people have seen, in urban settings, have seen plenty of people die by fire. Okay? But usually you have the entire body there. Okay? The so that part of it. That I heard of, nothing in the room was burned. It was just this lady and parts of her chair. I've actually seen pictures of it. And, and you see her foot. No, actually, no. So this was in the modern era. So this is yeah, after Dickens. So you can see her mm -hmm. foot. She's right near the fire. So they obviously set themselves on fire. Again, they're usually alcoholic, fat. Yes. The thing is, Elderly. the thing that's weird is when they found her skull, it had shrunken for some reason. From what I remember. From oh, okay. I did not see that. I just saw the foot. Anyway. Yeah. They found her skull eventually, and it was shrunken. It had shrunken so, somehow. But, like, so now what's interesting is in Dickens' old reporting, he notes they're basically all alcoholics. That's what he noticed. But a lot of the other ones, like, they're fat and old and alcoholics. Yes, elderly, in ill health, other than being alcoholic, drunk. Okay, Mr. Crook is not fat, though, um, and sitting near a fire, in any case. So, Crook had letters in his cap. Do you think they got burned? Uh, Bleak House is an excellent book, but, you know, I would start with the miniseries. It's an excellent miniseries, so here's uh, Crook. So, they actually have him in the 2005 Adaptation is not very old, though he is old in the um, in the book. Uh, overweight in this one, though I think in the book he was not quite so overweight, but he was definitely an alcoholic in all of these. Um, so I'll provide some of these <laughs> with some of these links. This is oh here's oh my gosh. So here is the illustration, and let me get rid of this ad. So here is the illustration. We could do full screen. Okay. Here's the illustration of what the, from the novel. Okay. So you see all of this smoke and there's nothing there. So they're not actually showing. I mean, you see, that's his, that's his cat, Lady Jane Grey. I don't know if they would have been on. I would just show Now that's what I was thinking. Now this kind of weird. There's like this doll in the background. Take a look at that. That's kind of creepy with its eyes. Ah. Um. Yeah, that one is, wow. Okay, so there's some odd pens from Pinterest that they're doing for this one. In any case, it really is what I like Bleak House about. There's actually a lot of things to Bleak House to enjoy. There's Mrs. Jellyby, um, who is the uh, woman who does charity but doesn't pay attention to her own family. What's cold, buddy? The snow is cold. Oh, snow is cold. Very good. Um, that's Mrs. Jellybee. There's Harold Skimpole. And I just, this is where I part ways with G.K. Chesterton. Uh, G.K. Chesterton didn't like where Dickens took Skimpole, but I found what cold Dickens hot. did with Skimpole cold to be very reasonable. Hey, D. Cold and hot. Cold and hot. Yes, sir. So, the other thing, Inspector Bucket is excellent. Now, the reason you'll want to see the miniseries is the um, lawyer is played by Charles Dance. Uh, very well. He's actually he's actually done a lot of Dickens miniseries. The one I really liked him doing was as uh, Uncle Ralph Nickleby and Nicholas Nickleby. That was a very good casting. Um, so there's a detective novel. There's some mystery because somebody gets murdered. Uh, and then you have the professional detective, as in police detective, police inspector. Um, so this is in contradiction to, say, Sherlock Holmes, who, of course, came many decades later, but uh, showing the police and the modern police 
as uh, you know, very professional and very able to get the job done.